I remember the joke about the deacon's wife went shopping. And as she was heading out the door, the deacon knew that the devil was going to try to get into their household in a tight financial and economic period. And so he said, honey, don't spend any money foolishly. And she said, okay, I won't. And when she came back from the store, she came into the room and she had on this beautiful dress. And she said, honey, what do you think of this dress I bought? And he said, I told you we didn't have the money to spend. Why did you buy that dress? And she said, well, the devil made me do it. And he said, what do you mean the devil made you do it? Didn't you tell that devil to just get behind you? She said, I did. And when he got back there, he told me how good I looked from back there too. <laughs> we need to keep a grip on our lives. We'll never be tempted farther or with more than we can bear. First Peter, chapter 1, 6 and 7, reminds us of a glorious truth. It says, though now for a... Though now, for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even, through a refine, even though refined by fire, may be proven genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. What a great God we have. He takes the best attacks of the evil one and uses them to make us holy. Think about that. I don't believe that God brings bad things to people. I, I hear that theology all the time, that God lets you suffer miserable and bad things. We live in a world that's an imperfect world. We live in a world of evil. There are spiritual battles that are going on. But we have a God that can take the worst that can happen to us, these trials, our failings, our shortcomings, and can turn them around as life lessons to us to help us to be more holy. Evil is a reality and it's even a threat, but it doesn't have to make us anxious or cause undue alarm. The ability of the evil one, honestly, is very limited. The battle is Christ and the victory is Christ. A lot of times when we take on these spiritual battles and stuff, we want to take it all on our shoulders. And you know, and I found myself that way as a pastor, as a leader. Maybe some of you serving in the Lord, you run into some of these spiritual things and you take them on yourself like you're the one that needs to carry the burden and fight these battles. Praise be to God that we're constantly hearing things like, you know, let go and let God deal with it. Certainly there's things that we need to do. Certainly there's a stand that we need, need to take. But we are not the fixer. You ever see that commercial, that, uh, what is it, the, the e-surance commercial or whatever, where the guy wants to be called the saver because he helped save someone on their expenses? And then the girl says, let me get this right. You want to be called the saver when there's another web, when e-surance or whatever saves hundreds of people every day, and what are they called? Fred. But you want to be called the saver. You know, we're not the saver. We don't have to fix everything. A lot of times the battle belongs to the Lord. And we just need to allow him to deal with those things. But he calls us to suit up and stand firm. So let's bring this thing to a close here. We need to take the shield of faith. We need to choose to have hope. And certainly in things that are unseen. That's faith. We need to continue to grow in our faith by reading God's word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. We also should choose to work together <coughs> and make our defense even stronger. I get calls throughout the week from different brothers. Got one this week. He said to me that, you know, the Holy Spirit had made something aware that was going on in his life and God was holding him accountable to it and he wanted to, you know, to share that and to help hold each other accountable because see, iron sharpens iron. And so we help each other with those things. I know the ladies was out camping. They made it back. Praise the Lord. I heard they had a great time. And... Uh, and then I heard somebody talking this morning about something and they were challenging somebody and say, yeah, but we, and I, and I kind of was going to step in and I was quickly reminded that that was something that they talked about at, at camping about and, and, and one was holding the other accountable. I think it was over coffee or something. I don't know. <laughs> but that's why God says not to forsake the coming together of believers. Not only do we glorify him as his children coming into his house, but where we come together and live together and dwell together, I mean, look at the Acts 2 church. They came together. They prayed. No one's possessions was of their own. There was no need amongst them. 
I mean, as a family, we're to support each other. We're to be there when somebody has a problem. I think it's neat when I'm seeing emails come across, uh, you know, across my computer. It says, yeah, we need a set of 250, 50, 17 tires or whatever. 16, I'm sorry. That's a hard size. Tony Copeland needing a set of tires for his car over there. His tires are wearing out. Well, you know what? The body of Christ just isn't in here. We work together as the body of Christ because we are brought together. And we protect the others who are in the body of Christ. When, my, when, my, when I drop my shield and I let them arrows come in, somebody else can get hurt. When I let the devil bring into through my mind and through my lack of faith issues that could bring damage to other people. Some of us may be weaker than the others. Some may be perhaps more educated than others. Some may be caught off guard frequently because of difficult times in their life. The reason doesn't matter as much as the purpose of our body is to work together, and here's the key, for the glory of God. And I know that's a hard thing to think the opposite way, but we don't do it for our own sake. We do it from the, for the glory of God. And if God is glorified, we are in that glory. We need to pull it together, especially during times of hurt, need of the body to protect each other, and in doing so, we 